I've been looking for a small form factor PC case that would work well with a passive CPU and GPU cooler for years now. The trouble is, most of the small form factor cases available are designed around all-in-one liquid coolers or low-profile CPU coolers. I never found one that would work well with a proper air cooler of at least 160 millimeters until November of 2020. I spotted this on the small form factor PC Reddit. It was more or less exactly what I was looking for. Plenty of ventilation for passive airflow, and just enough space for a 160mm air cooler. There are a few similar alternatives, like those found on Taobao, the Sliger S620, and Silverstone's new Sugo 14 and 15 cases. But none of these really caught my eye like this one I saw on Reddit. Silverstone's Sugo 15 does look like a nice alternative though. A first batch of the Spylab's jack-of-all-trades, known by its acronym JOT, was launched in November. It is made of six aluminum panels that are held together by eight aluminum corner joints. It comes with a power button, AC power pass-through cable, and an optional USB Type-C front panel cable, and or clear acrylic panels for the side and bottom of the case. I chose the Type-C cable but not the acrylic panels since they would somewhat compromise CPU and GPU cooling. The case is 14.9 liters in volume and just about 3 pounds heavy. The panels will flex a bit if pressed, but when it is assembled it is quite strong, so I wouldn't worry about picking it up and moving it around. The large cutouts in the panels allow for an almost open air cooling effect, while having just enough protection from falling objects or moving limbs. Spy Labs is currently working on a new batch of cases for release, with minor changes to improve it when used in a vertical orientation. The system featured in this video will include the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X CPU, Fantex TC14PE CPU cooler, PNY NVIDIA Quadro P2200 graphics card, Ryzen Tech Morpheus 2 GPU cooler, ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard, 16GB of Team Group Vulcan Z DDR4, 3600MHz memory, a 500GB Samsung 980 Pro NVMe SSD, and a Silverstone NJ450 SXL SFX fanless power supply. One word about GPU coolers. GPU mounting holes are not standardized, so be very careful about choosing an aftermarket GPU cooler. The Rigentech Morpheus 2, Prolimatech MK26, and Arctic Accelero Extreme 3 are possible options for cooling a 75 watt card passively, but compatibility is tricky. Luckily, the Quadro P2200 has two sets of mounting holes, and it is compatible with nearly all aftermarket coolers. However, the same cannot be said of the GTX 1650, for example, unfortunately. If you'd like to get right to the test results and conclusions, you can skip the next 15 minutes.
Unfortunately, the AC power pass-through cable that comes with the case has a bulky C14 connector that interferes with the large CPU cooler if you try to fit it to the case. I was able to replace the C14 connector and connect the wires at a 90 degree downward angle to avoid this issue, but that is a big inconvenience. The alternative is to simply leave the power connector hanging outside of the case. To me, this is a major downside of the case that I would like to see improved on future versions. I'm not used to working with such small tower style cases, and I have a newfound appreciation for them. Installation of the power supply was a bit tricky. One, because the AC pass-through cable interfered with the PSU mounting brackets, and two, there really is not much space to easily route the ATX power cables from the power supply to the components that need them. The 3D printed power supply mounting bracket was easy enough to cut, so the pass-through cable issue was not a major one. I'm really happy with the result and think the case is beautiful in its simplicity. There is space in front of the power supply to mount one, or possibly two, 2.5 inch SSDs. When I first installed the graphics card with the large Regentech cooler, there was some sag due to the weight. I mitigated this with two very thick thermal pads placed underneath the GPU cooler. To test the performance of this system, I ran Passmark's performance test. Overall, the system received 4.5 stars out of 5. The CPU received 4.5 stars. 2D graphics received 4.5 stars. 3D graphics received 3.5 stars. Memory received 4 stars. And the drive received 5 stars. The system performed in the top 6% of all results. And very similarly to a system I recently built, with the very large and heavy Tormetal UP10 case. Although that case can handle some higher power configurations, as I'll be testing soon. Subscribe to see me push the limits of that case. Back to the Spylabs case. I did some extensive thermal testing of the system to find out how well the CPU and GPU coolers would perform in the case, with the help of Prime95, Firmark, and Hardware Info. I tested the CPU at 10 watt power limit intervals between 45 and 75 watts, which is the highest that the Ryzen 5 CPU would go without overclocking. For the GPU, the power limit was locked unfortunately, so it was tested at its stock power limit only. I performed the same tests in the horizontal orientation and in the vertical orientation. Looking at the CPU results, temperatures were only slightly lower in the vertical orientation with the Fantex TC14PE. 
The trend lines and formulas allow me to estimate maximum temperatures for any CPU power limit. Results were acceptable all the way up to 75 watts, which was the default power limit for the Ryzen 5 5600X and B550 Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard combo. Looking at GPU temperatures, temperatures were significantly lower in the horizontal orientation with the Ryzen Tech Morpheus 2. The difference was about 5 degrees, but just like with the CPU, results were acceptable either way. The NVIDIA Quadro P2200 has a 75 watt power spec, but my P2200's power consumption was in the low 60s as reported by Hardware Info anyway. In conclusion, the Spylab's Jack of All Trades is a great small form factor case for passive cooling with a large CPU air cooler and an aftermarket GPU cooler. It's about the closest you'll get to the natural ventilation of an open air system with the protection from damage that is not possible with an open air system. With the right CPU and GPU coolers, you can adequately cool up to 75 watts from the CPU and GPU 100% passively. Visit my Patreon page to get details of every one of my builds and find some exclusive content, including a full speed video of this jack of all trades build. Visit Fully Silent PCs if you are interested in supporting this work and purchasing your own custom built fanless PC. Thanks for watching. Like this video, share it, and subscribe for more fanless PC content.